What's up, my comic comrades? Yes, the time has finally arrived. With Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League landing on HBO Max this week, we will finally see his live action version of Darkseid. So today we're here to break down the comic book history of the almighty Darkseid, ruler of Apocalypse. We've been waiting a very long time to do this episode. In fact, we've intentionally waited for Darkseid to make his live action movie debut since it was teased in BVS. And we couldn't be more excited that that day has finally come. But before we dive in, we want to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's episode. Everyone knows Raid Shadow Legends by now, but did you know it's Raid's second anniversary? That's right, it's been two years since Raid burst onto the scenes and completely took over mobile gaming. And since then, Raid's only gotten bigger and better. This epic fantasy game gives you the ability to battle using your favorite champions from more than 12 warring factions. And over the past two years, Raid has grown into the number one RPG game in the US with a massive community of more than 1 million players every day. It's okay, we'll get another cake. Such babies. Raid's constantly growing community has had quite a bit of fun since the game launched. Because like so much of geekdom, in the end, it's the combo of content and community that makes Raid so much fun. And for that, all the content creators at Raid want to thank all of its awesome players for two great years, with many more to come. In fact, this month, for Raid's two-year anniversary, the schedule is absolutely packed with amazing events. They've got six straight weeks of anniversary events and tournaments, running from now all the way through mid-April, all of them with insane prizes to win. They're even launching the first Clan vs Clan tournament to give players a chance to compete directly against another clan to see who comes out on top. And if that's not enough, they're also releasing their first champion in the dope looking Shadowkin faction, which I can't wait to see. I'm definitely going to try and get my hands on them. Yes, collecting and developing champions is still our favorite part of the game, and yes, the Dark Elves is where it's at. I'm just saying. Anyway, Raid's huge already and their whole anniversary event makes it an awesome time to join the Raid community. So don't wait around. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan our QR code and you'll get your free epic champion Jotun, who's amazing for the Doom Tower, 100k silver, 50 gems, and 3 ancient shards so you can summon even more awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. Remember, only new players will get those bonuses through our link. And once you're up and running, you'll find all these rewards waiting for you to claim in your inbox right here for the next 30 days. So happy birthday, Raid! click our link and we'll see you in the game. But now, without any further ado, it's time to break down the history of one of the biggest bad guys in all of comics, Darkseid. Darkseid first appeared as a cameo in Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen issue 134 in November of 1970, before making his first full appearance in Forever People issue 1 in February of 1971. He was created by none other than the great Jack Kirby. It all started when Kirby went to DC Comics to work on Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen with issue 133. As soon as he was put on the book, he started laying down the groundwork for his creation and idea, The Fourth World, which in layman's terms is his universe of eternal conflict between good and evil, aka New Genesis vs Apocalypse. Then literally on his second issue of Superman's Pal, he put a cameo of Darkseid. Darkseid was originally intended to be the main villain for the Forever People, New Gods, and Mr. Miracle titles, which to be fair, he was, but Darkseid grew to become even more than that. You see, after the cancellation of those titles, DC was like, yeah, we still want to see Darkseid, so he would continue to make appearances as a villain in some major DC titles, ultimately fighting characters like Superman and Batman, and then even the entire Justice League. As for how Jack Kirby came up with Darkseid, well, as legend has it, he modeled Darkseid's face off of actor Jack Palance, while the villain's personality was inspired by Adolf Hitler and Richard Nixon. And I gotta say, if you're gonna have a villain inspired by someone, it doesn't get much eviler than Hitler. But now that you know a little bit about Darkseid's real world creation, let's take a look at his fictional one with origins. Now, Darkseid has had two major origins over the years, his original Jack Kirby one and the one from the 2011 New 52 reboot. And though I'm not sure which origin they're going to be pulling from most for Zack Snyder's Justice League, I will say that doesn't matter. Because us true Darkseid and fourth world fans know there's only one real origin for Darkseid, and that's the one created and told to us by Jack the King Kirby. So that's the one I'm about to break down. It all starts with the origin of the new gods, because as we know, Darkseid is a new god. You see, as Jack Kirby told us himself, many, many years ago, there came a time when the old gods died. The brave died with the cunning. The noble perished, locked in battle with unleashed evil. It was the last day for them. An ancient era was passing and Fury Holocaust. The final moment came with the fatal release of indescribable power, which tore the home of the old gods asunder. Split into two great halves, and filled the universe with the blinding death flash of destruction. In the end, there were two giant molten bodies, spinning slow and barren, clean of all that had gone before. Drift in the feeding sounds of cosmic thunder. Silence closed upon what had happened, a long deep silence wrapped in massive darkness. It was this way for an age, then there was new light, and out of this light, the new gods were born. But like any civilization, alien or not, there's good and there's evil. Now, as I just mentioned a moment ago, the homeworld of the old gods was split into two during its destruction, with each one ultimately becoming its own 
own new planet. One essentially becoming heaven and the other one hell. That's not literal, that's just the best way to look at it. And of course, we're here to elaborate on Darkseid, who rules the evil hell planet named Apocalypse. As the god Orion even said, all that New Genesis stands for is reversed on Apocalypse. But before Darkseid ruled Apocalypse, before he became Darkseid, he was known as Prince Usyx. He was second in line to the throne of Apocalypse, which didn't sit well with him because he wanted to be king. So he devised a plan to take control of Apocalypse, but he didn't have to get rid of his father, because his father, King Yuka Khan, was trapped in the Source Wall after attempting to unlock the secret to the Source. However, he did have to get rid of his older brother Drax, and no, not Drax from Marvel and Guardians of the Galaxy, completely different universe and character. So when Drax went to the Infinity Pit to obtain and master the Omega Effect, Uxus killed him and stole the Omega Effect from his brother, at which point Uxus' skin turned to stone and he renamed himself Darkseid. So if you ever wondered why Darkseid's skin looks like concrete or stone, that's why. His skin turned to stone once he stole the Omega Effect from his brother, at which point he took up the name Darkseid. Now that's how Uxus became Darkseid, but if you could believe it or not, Darkseid actually became a little tamer after this. And what is the only thing that could tame a man? Say it with me. A woman, and that would be Sully, a kind-hearted scientist who used her power for the common good instead of conquering. But Darkseid's mother, Queen Hegra, was all like, nope, this is Apocalypse, and you're not gonna corrupt my son with all your good intentions. He's gotta stay evil. So she had to sod Apocalypse's torturer, kill her, but not before she gave birth to Darkseid's son, Killabok. But of course, Darkseid eventually found out his mother had Sully killed, so now more pissed off and motivated than ever to see his mother dead, he also used Asad, this time to kill his own mother by poisoning her. This all led to Darkseid forever turning his back on the concept of love and compassion, leaving him as the unstoppable ruler of Apocalypse. And now that you know Darkseid's origin, let's start talking about some of his story arcs and publication history. Now, when you think dark side story arcs and comics, there's obviously several that come to mind, one of which being the Great Darkness Saga. And the reason for that is it takes place 1,000 years in the future where Darkseid has been gone for centuries. To say he's a distant memory would be an understatement, but just because he's forgotten doesn't mean he's gone and not gonna make a comeback. And that's exactly what he does when he returns 1,000 years into the future and starts fighting with the heroes of this time, aka the Legion of Superheroes. Once back, he uses magic and science, aka alchemy, to make himself even more powerful. He then places the planet Daxum under a yellow sun to give all of its crypto inhabitants Superman-like powers. If you didn't know, the planet Daxum is made up of a colony of Kryptonians who left Krypton to explore the universe. Anyway, Darkseid then puts them under mind control and uses them to try to conquer the universe. But of course, in the end, the Legion of Superheroes are like, yeah, that's not gonna happen, and defeated Darkseid. We then have the Darkseid story from the Seven Soldiers Mr. Miracle miniseries from 2005, which gave us Boss Darkseid. Basically what happens here is it's revealed that Darkseid has finally got what he's always wanted, the anti-life equation. And once he gets it, he uses it to destroy all of Fourth World. If you don't know what Fourth World is, it's Jack Kirby's universe where the New Gods live, both New Genesis and Apocalypse, and Darkseid destroyed all of it. Because of this, the New Gods fled to Earth where they would stay in hiding. And this is where things get crazy. We learn that High Father and everyone that follows him are now a group of homeless people. We also learn that both Metron and Black Racer use wheelchairs, Granny Goodness became a woman pimp for the female Furies, Desaad is an evil sadistic psychiatrist, and Darkseid is now a prominent gang leader who they call Boss Darkseid. It's a pretty crazy, but cool story. If you're familiar with Grant Morrison and his writing, you know what I'm talking about. It's weird, but good. Either way, by the end of the story, Darkseid devises a plan to destroy the new gods once and for all. But this brings us to the Big Mama, and probably the most famous Darkseid story of all time, for better or for worse, Final Crisis. And what's crazy about Final Crisis is that the Seven Soldiers Mr. Miracle miniseries and Boss Darkseid ties into it, but that's what we call going down the wormhole. So we're not gonna get into that right now, but just know that Boss Darkseid is a big part of Final Crisis. As for Final Crisis itself, it starts off with Darkseid taking over and messing up the multiverse with the help of his herald, Libras. All you really need to know about Libra is he's an agent of Darkseid who's a supervillain anti-Christ-like figure. But he's not the only person helping out Darkseid. Darkseid has a legion of followers that's helping him as he undergoes his latest rebirth, which leads to Darkseid gaining the fullest of his power. But eventually Batman is able to shoot Darkseid with the same exact bullet that killed Orion. Darkseid's son, which gives us the ever-famous image of Batman using a gun to shoot Darkseid. But if Batman using a gun isn't crazy enough for you, simultaneously while Batman shoots Darkseid, Darkseid hits Batman through the heart with one of his Omega Beams, sending Batman back in time and infecting him with Omega energy. Now, originally, we didn't know that at first. We thought Darkseid straight up killed Batman, but in actuality, he was lost in space and time via the Omega Sanction. And the Batman body we saw Superman holding was actually one of the many Batman clones Darkseid made. It was a whole thing, because what? comics. This leads to a confrontation with Superman and Darkseid, and of course Superman is extremely pissed that he just killed his best friend. 
and you know, is also destroying the universe. But Darkseid just mocks Superman as he failed to defend Earth, and also tells him that he created a doomsday singularity that is going to threaten all of existence. So of course Superman is like, yep, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you now. But when he starts doing so, Darkseid tells him that he doesn't only exist in that body. He now exists in all the bodies who fell to the power of the anti-life equation, and that killing him would also be killing all of humanity. Long story short, before Darkseid can kill Superman, Wally West and Barry Allen show up, bringing Black Racer to kill Darkseid, along with Wonder Woman, who then uses her lasso to hold Darkseid's spirit form, which in turn frees humanity from Darkseid's anti-life equation and being controlled by him. Then as a last ditch effort, if you will, Darkseid's disembodied essence appears and tries to take control of the Miracle Machine. If you don't know, the Miracle Machine turns thoughts into reality, but Superman's like, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen, and instead uses the solar energy within his cells to power the Miracle Machine to make a wish, basically putting everything back to normal, or at least make things good again. And we also learned that Batman was able to return safely to the present thanks to Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, Damian Wayne, and the entire Justice League. Meaning he was able to consume Omega Energy in his body without damaging the timelines. But what's really crazy about that is, it makes Batman only the second person ever to escape the Omega Sanction. The only other person to ever do that is Mr. Miracle, and that's literally his gimmick. He escapes from things. All of this brings us to the New 52. In the New 52, Darkseid was the reason for the Justice League's formation. Literally, in the first Justice League New 52 story arc, Darkseid invades with his parademons, which forces Green Lantern, Aquaman, Flash, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Cyborg all to meet for the first time and eventually join forces to beat Darkseid, which was written by Jeff Johns and drawn by Jim Lee. I really enjoyed their time on the New 52 Justice League run. It was one of my favorite things to come out of the New 52. Then during DC Rebirth, Darkseid is quite literally a baby at the start of it, which carried over from the New 52 during the Darkseid War storyline. Darkseid progressively ages throughout DC Rebirth, but ultimately decides it's not the best time to fight the Justice League, because he doesn't want to risk revealing his greater plans before leaving through a boom tube with his daughter Grail. And this leads us to the most current appearance of Darkseid, which is in the DC Infinite Frontier era. In Infinite Frontier issue zero, the very last page reveals that Darkseid is back and stronger than ever, preparing to cement his reign over the DC multiverse. If you guys want to know the whole story, we did an episode on it, which you could find right here. But just like that, my comic comrades, it's time for powers and abilities. Darkseid is incredibly powerful. He's easily one of the most powerful beings in the DC multiverse. Because of this, he's conquered entire universes. There's a reason all of Apocalypse worships him as the god of evil. Darkseid's strength is up there with the likes of Trigon and the Anti-Monitor. With that said, let's start breaking down some of his powers individually, or at least start listing them. He has a new god physiology, meaning he has incredible strength due to their relative proximity to the source, which as us DC fans know, is a mysterious energy that fuels everything in DC. It's quite literally the source of all. Because of this, he has superhuman strength and could easily lift 100 tons. He's also held off the entire Justice League by himself. And considering you have two heavy hitters like Superman and Wonder Woman on the team, amongst the fastest man alive and the king of the sea, that's insane. But let's keep going. Darkseid is fueled by the Omega Effect. For those of you who don't know, the Omega Effect is a force of entropy from the destructive side of the source. This gives him his iconic Omega Beams, which are beams he has complete control over that he shoots from his eyes. They essentially act as trackers following its target wherever it moves, and when they hit, they pretty much can destroy anything. But he also has telepathy, mind control, telekinesis, energy manipulation, energy enhanced strikes, energy force fields, he can fly, soul manipulation, Resurrection, because he's immortal. Teleportation, size alteration, astral projection, cosmic sense, power distribution, and of course, the Omega Sanction, which is probably his most powerful ability. Basically what it is, is a living hell. It traps an organism in a series of alternate realities, each worse than the previous. He's also possessed the anti-life equation, which as you would assume, is the opposite of the life equation. Meaning the anti-life equation destroys all life. It's what he used to almost defeat DC's heroes during the final crisis story. Basically when it comes down to it, Darkseid is easily top five most dangerous villains in the DC universe. Now, if you guys want some Dark Side reading recommendations, check out the Dark Side War storyline. We didn't get into it today, but it's an amazing story. Justice League Volume 1 Origin from the New 52, The Great Darkness Saga, and of course, Final Crisis. Those should be enough to get all of you started. First up for the week of the 17th, we have Justice League issue 59. This issue is the start of a new era for the Justice League written by Brian Michael Bendez, with an all new lineup, including Superman, Batman, The Flash, Hawkgirl, Aquaman, 
Hippolyta, Naomi, and Black Adam. In it, Superman is leading the charge to reinvent the Justice League, and at the same time, a new cosmic power threat arrives from Naomi's homeworld to rule the Earth. Here we have Nightwing issue 78. Nightwing is back, and his drive to keep Bloodhaven safe has never been stronger. But his adopted city has elected a new mayor with the last name Zuko. So when Nightwing enlists Batgirl's help to investigate the politician bearing the same name as the man who murdered his parents, she unearths details that will shock and fundamentally change the hero. Next up, we have Ultra Mega issue 1. A cosmic plague has spread, transforming everyday people into violent, monstrous kaiju. Only the Ultra Mega 3 individuals imbued with incredible powers hold the line against the madness. Their battle levels cities and leave untold horror in their wake. If you're a fan of giant monsters and things like Ultraman, this book is for you. And finally, we have Thor issue 13. Odin has been found, but he's not the same all-father he once was. So what does that mean for Thor? And just like that, that brings today's episode of Variant to a close. But if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out this one right here to my left. And if you like the channel, as always, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps us out. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.